Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll be looking at what many passengers fear the most, turbulence. I'll explain what turbulence are, how they are generated, nine different types of turbulence because you thought there's only one type, and are they dangerous? Will my plane break in half? And what all of that has to do with a stream of water? Cabin crew, take your seats and let's get started. One, two. This is 208, if you would be kind enough to turn the transponder to the on position. Roger. Hello everyone, just quick information. Today's video is actually brought to you by Captain Joe Video Calls. What does that mean? You can actually call me. We're gonna hop on a Zoom call together. So if you wanna do that, the link in the description box below, you can then schedule a call and we're gonna talk about how you wanna become a pilot, uh, maybe a motivational pep talk, maybe have a bit of fear of flying. Schedule your call now. The first 10 people who schedule it will get an entire free session with me. I'm looking forward to that, see ya. To put it very simple, turbulence is a sudden change in airflow that causes the aircraft to change its attitude, altitude, and direction. I know it sounds lame, and this fact clearly won't calm you down regarding your next flight. Now, as the plane flies through the air, it encounters updrafts and downdrafts. Now, these cause the plane to move in an unpredictable way. It is similar to driving an uneven highway where dips in the road cause the car to suddenly bounce up and down. You feel safe in your car because you can actually see the potholes or dips or whatever causing the bounce of your car. Pilots can often determine dips and potholes in the air long before they fly through them or try to avoid them. And there are nine different types of turbulence we need to talk about. Number one, thermal and convective turbulence. Now, as the sun hits the ground, it warms up the surrounding air, causing it to expand and rise. Now, as the air moves and follows its path upwards, it carries heat and moisture which cause water droplets to collect and turn into clouds. Now differences in moisture and therefore in air density create patches of air that generate more or less lift over the wings, causing the plane to suddenly climb or descend. This turbulence is most common and is experienced at lower altitudes. Now when you look outside and it's a bright and sunny day, you might get shaken back and forth due to warm rising air, so therefore thermals, or your pilot is flying through some convective clouds. Side note, ever thought about why gliders often fly below convective clouds? They use the updraft to gain altitude. Number two, wake turbulence. Now I've explained those in a previous video of mine. The link in the video is right here, or here. <laughs> the wake or vortex that trails from an aircraft wingtips cause turbulent air, which is usually a problem during the approach, especially when a light aircraft follows a heavier one. Therefore, air traffic control has to allow enough time for the vortex to dissipate, which is why there's always an appropriate separation between planes that are landing or taking off. However, during the flight, it is possible for the aircraft to pass through another plane's wake turbulence, or sometimes called jet wash, which will cause a sudden turbulence and last only for a few seconds, but they are one of the worst. Flight students might be familiar with these whilst performing steep turns. Often, just as you exit out of your steep turn, you might fly through your own wake you've left behind as you enter the steep turn. Those can lead to some nasty surprises. But these kind of turbulence are predictable as you know the route and cause of it. Number three, mechanical turbulence. Mechanical turbulence is caused by solid objects, such as tall buildings and mountains, creating a change in airflow. Now, as air follows the shape of terrain and its surroundings, it creates vortexes near the ground. Now, if you ever watched a stream of water, you may have noticed that the water sort of seems to bend and create small vortexes as it runs down the stream. Now, these vortexes are called eddies and they are similar to air vortexes that generate mechanical turbulence during flight. Now classic mechanical turbulence are rotors created between airplane hangars near the touchdown zone, the place you least want them. Fantastic. <laughs> Number four, temperature inversion turbulence. A temperature inversion, also called thermal inversion, is a reversal of the normal behavior of temperature in which a layer of cool air at the surface is overlain by a layer of warmer air. 
normally air temperature decreases with altitude. Now, as this is an unusual weather event, the different temperature layers start mixing with each other vertically, meaning up and down drafts can occur between the layers, causing your plane to experience some turbulence. Now, these turbulence are more common during the winter time and within valleys. Number five, self-induced turbulence. Yes, pilots can somewhat create turbulence themselves. I'm not kidding. You might have experienced these before during descent. Now let's say ATC would clear the pilot for a shorter approach than normal. Now the pilots have to descend steeper and at a higher speed and therefore extend the speed brakes. Now by doing so, the speed brakes or aerodynamic brakes extend on the upper side of the wing surface increasing drag and making the air very turbulent. Now this turbulent air then hits the horizontal stabilizer and elevator, causing the plane to sort of shake as you are flying through its own turbulence. Now similar as you extend the landing lights at 10,000 feet on the Airbus A320, the airflow gets disturbed, creating this little turbulence hitting the fuselage and it sort of gives a very weird sound. Now this shows no plane is entirely perfect. Number six, frontal turbulence. Frontal turbulence is caused by lifting of warm air. Now this is a situation that happens where cold air moves in like a big wedge underneath warm air. Cold air is always heavier than warm air and also denser, and it's going to tend to slide under the warm air and push the warm air upward. Now, any time you have air rising upward, it's going to expand and cool and loses its ability to hold moisture. And this will give you a band of clouds and precipitation along a cold front. Now, within that band, abrupt wind shifts between the unstable warm air and cold air cause some severe turbulence. Number seven, the mountain wave turbulence. As air flows over the tops of mountains, traveling down the leeward side, so the area in the shadow of the mountain, a standing mountain wave can form, and air currents sort of oscillate between altitudes. Now, mountain waves and turbulence can extend for hundreds of miles downwind of the mountain range. And this is particularly dangerous when flying with an underpowered aircraft over the Alps or other high mountainous areas. Now these waves can literally push your plane to the ground. Number eight, thunderstorm turbulence. Now those are, in my opinion, among the most dangerous turbulence. Any pilot will do his best to avoid these. Thunderstorms most often bring turbulence with them, not just in the core of the thunderstorm, but also 15 to 30 miles downwind of it. Now even flying above them can be very hazardous. Now, most important though, is to avoid flying through them. Now, the red parts carry the most precipitation and therefore have the nastiest up and down drafts. I personally had to go through such a red zone once as it was absolutely unavoidable. We got hit by lightning four times in less than two minutes and I couldn't believe how a 400 ton aircraft goes up and down like an elevator. I do not wish to experience that again, believe me. And last but not least, the most unpredictable turbulence of all coming in in number nine, the so-called clear air turbulence. Now, clear air turbulence happens in the absence of any visual clues, hence its name. It usually happens when two masses of air that move at different speeds meet, or better known as jet streams. Now, very generally speaking, they move from west to east at hundreds of kilometers per hour. Now, moving in and out of a jet stream helps reduce flight time and fuel consumption, but the negative side effect, you can encounter some rough turbulence. Pilot reports of preceding aircraft help to avoid clean air turbulence as the following pilots can then adjust altitude or track. Okay, now we know the different types, let's look on how pilots or the cabin crew and planes deal with these turbulence. Now, turbulence is one of the scariest things that happen during flight, but how dangerous are they really? Now, the answer is, generally speaking, not at all. Most of the time, from a pilot's standpoint, turbulence is a convenience issue rather than a safety issue. However, most turbulence-related injuries occur to passengers who fall or hit their heads as the plane gets shaken back and forth. 
Now, as a passenger, you are less likely to be hurt during flight than the cabin crew because, unlike them, you are seated most of the time with your seatbelt on. This is why it's important to keep your seatbelt on even when the seatbelt sign is off. The captain will turn on the sign when turbulence is expected, but sometimes it can happen instantaneously. Wake turbulence, clear air turbulence, etc. And the last thing you want is to be thrown around the cabin. Now usually, but very rarely, in case the turbulence gets worse, the captain will make an announcement via the PA to the crew. Meaning they have to immediately return back to their stations and fasten their seat belts or find the nearest empty seat and buckle up. Comment below if you have experienced this call out in one of your flights. Now how does the plane deal with it? If you look out of the aircraft's window during turbulence, you may notice that the wings move up and down, which is known as wing flexing. One of the biggest fears that passengers have is that the wings might break or fall off during strong turbulence. Now, as far as I have done my research, this has never happened to any commercial airplane. Wing flexing is very normal and it acts just like the suspension in your car. Now, wings are made to handle extreme stresses. For example, the Boeing 787, which during testing, had its wings flexed more than 20 feet, which is 150% more stress than it is expected to encounter during a normal flight. So no problem for the 787 dealing with 150% more of the maximum weight load it was certified. Most of the turbulence experienced by passengers and pilots are classed as light or moderate turbulence. Although moderate turbulence usually causes more panic for the passengers, the airplane is entirely under control. There are several ways to avoid or minimize the possible effects of turbulence. Now, significant meteorological information, so-called SIGMETs, contains weather information concerning the safety of an aircraft. Those reports contain jet stream charts and other important information such as thunderstorms, heavy clouds, turbulence reports, icing, etc. Now, weather radars are able to detect thunderstorms or CB clouds as they have a lot of moisture in them and pilots will coordinate with ATC to fly around them. Clear air turbulence, as mentioned before, are more difficult to predict and avoid. Now, usually it is reported by other pilots through PI reps. You also often hear pilots joining a new frequency and asking the air traffic controller, any turbulence reports so far or among pilots, How's your ride up there? Smooth. The pilot may then ask permission to climb or descend in order to avoid these turbulent areas. Pilots will make sure that the altitude, speed and thrust remain constant while flying through turbulence and again, they will turn the seatbelt signs on. Please take this seriously as a passenger, listen to the cabin crew's announcement and keep your seatbelts fastened. It is ultimately your responsibility to stay safe during turbulence by remaining seated and following the advice given by the pilots or the cabin crew. And one last thing, whatever you do, don't ever call a turbulence an air hole or a sudden vacuum. A jet or a piston engine needs air to run. So you're telling me every time you went through an air hole, the pilots had to restart the engine? That question is your answer to your air holes or sudden vacuums. They don't exist. <laughs> That's it for today. I hope I enlightened some nervous flyers a little bit on the topic of turbulence. Thank you very much for your time. Here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel. Check. Activate the notification bell. Check. Follow my Instagram account. Check. And don't forget, a good pilot, well, in today's video, a good passenger is always learning. See you next week. Wishing all the best. Your Captain Joe. <laughs>